lithium and other battery metals were in focus at PDAC, and INN's Priscilla Barrera had the chance to speak with Howard Klein of RK Equity about the market, from supply and demand to prices and much more. Keep listening to hear the interview. We hope you enjoy. So I'm going to jump right into the questions. Overall, we've seen the lithium industry receive a lot of interest in, in the past few years. Um, but what has caught your attention uh, last year in lithium? Did any trends surprise you? What happened last year is from the very beginning of the year, we, we on one of our um, videos, we had like Chamath Palahapatia and Byron Ween um, at the beginning of the year in 2022, they were saying like, what is the sector and what's the most interesting? And they started talking about critical minerals, battery materials in particular as like no brainer with, with lithium being very prominent within that. And then you saw CNBC, Pippa Stevens and, and Bloomberg and like, like virtually every week you just heard lithium, lithium, lithium. Um, uh, people just cottoning on in the mainstream financial media about this dynamic. And then last year, and I think it was Q2, you had Tesla mention lithium like 24 times. The quarter after that, he mentioned lithium like 27 times. Talking about enter the lithium refining business, it's very much a misdirection. I think to Elon Musk is is giving disinformation about lithium into the market because the margins are on the uh, upstream in particular the, the spodumin side um, but nevertheless the fact that he has been so prominently articulating every single quarter about asking entrepreneurs to kind of get in the industry because it's the major bottleneck uh, that's a, the massive trend uh, and that continues even today despite the fact that we've had a slight pullback in the prices which we'll talk about a little bit later so would you say there's been sort of awakening in terms of the scale of lithium demand that will be needed to support uh, this ener energy transition that we've been talking about for, for so long now? Yeah, there has been an awakening, but, you know, it's kind of like that nap you take uh, late afternoon, you know, for an hour. Um, sometimes you want to kind of like, you know, just be ready to go, but you're in such a deep sleep that you're groggy for, you know, an, another hour or two after that until you've actually woken up. So it's that kind of awakening. It's not like um, we're going to talk about some of the deals that, that have been done, but like GM coming into Lithium Americas and, and, and um, other companies like Ford with Liontown, you're, you're seeing a trajectory. It's accelerating, right? The EV, the LG Chem. You're going to see more and more of this. We're here at PDAC. It's packed. Last week at BMO, I was speaking to, we have many clients in the space, but one client told me he had like 58 meetings, 20 of which were with strategics. So GM, Ford, LG Chem, SK Innovation, Samsung, etc., are all they never would come to mining conferences. So they had teams of procurement people there. And uh, so there's definitely an awakening. The momentum of deal activity is going to accelerate. And um, they're trying not to appear as if they're panicked, but I, I, I feel that they're, that this musical chairs that we've talked about, it's finally sinking in but they're still, they're balking because, you know, there's still a lot of misinformation, as I just described, you know, Elon Musk is pushing, but also Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, others, because of the cyclicality and velocity is a word I, I use frequently, I, I coined it, you know, in one of our interviews, if you have two years boom, two years bust, there's like, okay, this boom, like, so if you're an auto OEM, you don't want to believe that prices are going to be fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars, and you're not necessarily going to want to cut a long-term deal at that price. So uh, there's an awakening, but I think the, the the negotiating leverage continues to be with the miners. So a company like Critical Elements, which is one of our clients, which is permitted, they're in a process. But their valuation relative to some other valuations out there, you know, is quite low. Like people don't like fundamentally understand that. And they've waited a long time. They're going to wait until they get the right deal. And it could be with a strategic, it could be with like the equity markets, but like 
all of the strategics and all of these procurement people, we have the RK Equity scoreboard, there's a hundred companies on there. Mm -hmm. All of those companies are trying to make sense of which of those hundred companies are real, which are more advanced, and, and then they have to negotiate with them because they're in process and they're not in a strong negotiating position. So it's a fantastic time to be doing what we're doing and representing you know, development companies because the prices of lithium are going to be stronger for longer and um, these guys are going to wake up properly and they're, they're, they're confronting a bit of a nightmare. And I wanted to circle back on lithium prices. So we've seen lithium prices remain at quite high levels throughout the past two years. Now we're starting to see a pullback um, in lithium prices in China. Now, from an investor perspective, um, how much does this pullback in prices worry you or should worry our audience? And how do you take into account lithium prices when looking at investing in companies in this sector? Um, the pullback in lithium prices does not worry me at all. In fact, you know, investors should be licking their chops to the extent that the very short-term fall in lithium prices is creating opportunities to buy the dip in the lithium equity sector. Um, a lot of people do real math and they say, you know, like what they look at equities and they say, what, what, what is the valuation of this company telling me is the forecasted price of lithium in the future? Some people do that. I just, uh, and there are certain companies like Allchem and LiveEnd uh, that are, you know, trading at relative discounts to their historic, you know, EV to EBITDA multiples, and then they're trading at, as producing companies, which have portfolios of development projects inside their companies that the market gives them like no value for. Uh, so there's, there's prices are disconnected from the cost curve and that's going to be the case for a long time because demand is going to be greater than supply. The demand, the surprises on demand have been on the upside. The surprises on supply have been on the downside and the GMs and the Fords of the world are are now introducing many more models this year, like the Ford F-150, the Cadillac Lyrics, all of these products are coming to market now and they demand lithium. And ESS is a very, you know, is going gangbusters in, in China, I'm hearing, um, and Tesla is pushing it, so it's, it's an under, most people don't have high lithium demand in their models for ESS. Rodney has been watching it very closely, Raw Motion as well has been watching it. Um, we believe that there are upside surprises on that side. So there will continue to be, there's all sorts of macro political, you know, interest rates are rising. You know, there's a lot of very fast moving money in and out. There's disinformation we think coming out of CATL and, and others that the people are trying to talk down the lithium. Elon Musk is trying to talk down the lithium price. CATL is talking about it's not going to work. And um, so, you know, Rodney does our supply, demand, and price forecasting. I forget he has his long, long-term price of spodumene. I think is like eighteen hundred, and and for uh, lithium chemicals, you know, maybe twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars. But that's like twenty, thirty. That's a predicting twenty, thirty. Well, beyond that, predicting beyond that, we're all going to be very wrong. In, in, the, in the short term, we think the Lunar New Year was a slowdown, and this year in particular because of COVID, you know, the, the Lunar New Year, people going home, it's been longer than normal. So I think that accounts for some of the blip. Also, the removal of subsidies in China front-loaded some of the demand late last year, so early this year, you're seeing uh, you know, maybe less demand short term, but I, I saw Daniel Jimenez posted like February you know, EV sales statistics up, you know, another major percent. Albemarle forecasting very rapid growth, SQM. So we think by the second half of the year, we just did an interview with Matt Fernley on Rockstock Channel, uh, will be published in a couple of days. Uh, he thinks we're going to bottom very soon and then have the next leg up you know, which could be higher highs. So um, it may not, he's talking kind of second half, but it, it could happen sooner than that. And markets also price things ahead of time. Um, 
so I, I'd be looking very closely now for you know a stoppage of the, the, the commodity equities follow commodity prices so with every day or every week that fast markets or s p you know or benchmark sends an email to your email box and it shows lithium price kind of goes down so watch when that stops falling right and you know any indication of you know an uptick i think it's relevant i'd also say spodumene prices should be focused on as much or more than the china spot lithium carbonate price and um pilbara didn't do a bmx auction last week but if you look at you know their tooling arrangement and the price that they received for that it's pretty much still in line with the BMX auction price. So if you're in the spodumene part of the market, developers are, are, are performing better on our scoreboard. If you look, like Argentine companies, DLE companies are performing less well, but the spodumene companies, which we've been arguing, keep it simple, stupid, you know, uh, spodumene, that's where a lot of the dynamism is and, and the focus. So, so it's... It, Everyone looks at the spot China carbonate price. I think they should focus more and more on Pilbara's auctions, and and soon you're going to have Sigma, Core, you know Piedmont, Sayana shipping spodumene product, and I'm sure that they're going to talk about the price. Alchem talks about that price. So just look, look at what the spodumene price that are actually being sold, um, and 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 what the companies who are selling this or kind of indicating to you their customers are, are telling them pay up for it. All right. And um, in terms of lithium supply and moving away a little bit from lithium prices, if there's a trend that, that we've, we're starting to see uh, materialize is this uh, electric vehicle makers making more investments uh, in the upstream, as, as you mentioned before, and looking at junior miners in particular, we, you talked about it, like... Piedmont amended its, its deal with Tesla. We had GM investing in Lithium Americas. Also even heard Tesla might might do a takeover of Sigma Lithium. What are your thoughts on these deals? Are, are they actually getting better for, for junior miners? And what do you expect to see in terms of involvement of OEMs, EV makers in the sector this year? Well, firstly, I'll say I think the, the Sigma Tesla rumor was complete BS. I read that article from Bloomberg. It was all anonymous source. There was nothing, but it, it was not true. Um, Tesla's looked at every company, right? So there's no question that Tesla. You know, so I wonder where that rumor came from. Was it Tesla? Was it from Sigma? Like who? who it, it was poor journalism. And I like Bloomberg. I'm just this. Is, this was my assessment, but it got a lot of like eyeballs, right? I do not believe, I believe I've been watching Elon Musk for a long time and I believe he has a fundamental blind spot, okay? And he has decided he is not going to get into mining, right? He may be forced ultimately to do it, but I, there have been several people in the lithium procurement department at Tesla who have left Tesla okay for competitors including one went to GM and what it happened soon after that they did a deal with lack one went to Rivian one went to a lithium producer live it okay so I think anyone who reads this like it's a big risk for Tesla this blind spot in lithium most Tesla followers don't want to believe that they think Elon, everything that Elon says is golden. I love Elon Musk. I love Tesla. I love what he's done. But there's a blind spot here that has created an awesome opportunity, which I've bet my entire career on, which is going long what Tesla is short. So, GM investing in Lithium Americas. You know, previously they, they did uh, invested millions of dollars in control thermal in salt and sea. I think GM Mary Barra is unbelievably politically astute and politically connected and would not have made this investment in Lithium Americas if they thought the uh, legal issues that Lithium Americas is confronted would not go away. And what happened? Within a week of their announcing this investment, you know, all the momentum is that, you know, Lithium America, it's under construction. So that was a sizable investment. I think they're investing 600 million plus. Uh, you know, they put 350 million, you know, into it. 
but that's not that much money from GM's perspective. Like GM has invested billions of dollars in autonomous vehicle like Cruise and other things. So like it's not unusual for GM, Volkswagen, Volkswagen is in quantum scape. So from GM's perspective, coming to Lithium Air, it's, it's meaningful. There's no question about it. And what's also meaningful about it is that it's not just processing, but they're investing in a company that's going to be doing mining. So that this is really good. I really want this project to kind of get off the ground. And, and but just also politically, this anti-mining mentality, if all of a sudden government motors, right, is in mining and they're very, you know, you led Mary is what, you know, Joe Biden said, if Mary is leading America into mining, this is going to be good for all other companies that are seeking to mine in America, like Ioneer, like Piedmont, like any of the other clay opportunities in the country. So that's all good. But it's just the beginning. Where is Volkswagen? Where is Ford? Where are their checks? LG Chem wrote a $75 million check to Piedmont. All they got for that was 200,000 tons of spodumene. That's it. They didn't really even get that. They got an equity stake in Piedmont, but they made a calculus. LG Chem has invested in Ganfeng's IPO. They invested in Tanchi's IPO. It's normal for them to do that, but you just saw CATL sell a stake in Pilbara, okay? OEMs should be looking to own equities in lithium, just like they're, they're investing in QuantumScape, you know, or Ford invested in Rivian and then they sold their stake in Rivian at a huge profit. So this is, a, in some ways, they, they can get investment returns that'll somewhat mitigate the super high price that they're gonna be forced to pay for the lithium. So, I think you're gonna, you should be seeing a lot more of that. So where's VW? Where's it? SK Innovations never written a check. Echo Pro, uh, Samsung, Panasonic. I want to see the big checks, equity checks, need to be written. Ford, Stellantis. Stellantis did a small deal in the, you know, in Vulcan, 50 million euro. BMW, Mercedes, Toyota, Honda. All of these companies, it's just beginning. They're and what you're going to see is not just investments in advanced assets. I think you're going to start seeing more and more people looking, oh, okay, it's super expensive to, if I got to write a big check to get into Lithium Americas, which is permitted and kind of ready to go, maybe I can mitigate the, like I've seen this company go from 25 million market cap to, you know, 250 or a billion. If they're positioned early, they can get some early offtake and some spot um, developers. I expect you're going to see more of that because I know a number of strategics are actually looking at fairly early stage companies that might not be in production until the latter part of this decade. All right. Definitely what we're seeing is governments getting uh, really involved in pushing for building up, I guess, more resilient supply chain that is less dependent on Asia. How should investors that are probably listening you know, factor in geopolitical dynamics in their investments? Um, well, you know, we have Rockstock Channel, and for a long time, um, you know, we've been narrating through the prism of you know, classic rock. So what, what, I haven't brought this up in a while, but it, it is a, a dynamic that's been there for a while, which is like Pink Floyd's, you know, us and, and them, right? So this is China and non-China dynamic. It's, I'm, I'm an economics and politics guy just by background, so I've always been fascinated by lithium, by the geopolitical dynamic. And, uh, you know, in America, very few things kind of like unify the country, right? But pushing back against China, you know, is certainly one that Democrats and Republicans both agree on. So. Um, the Trump administration made some positive progress on deregulation and, and other related activities, but there was never appetite to invest money in kind of like climate change or Green New Deal type technology. So the Biden administration, which does have that, you know, is very much wants to support that, built, you know, or advanced uh, uh, very rapidly. Um, on some of the progress that the Trump administration, you know, ha had made, and they pushing through the Inflation Reduction Act in particular, in addition to the Chips Act, and in addition to some of the other acts, but it was the, you know, it looked dead, but like Manchin revived it, uh, Senator Manchin revived it. You know, this is a big deal, 
So the U.S., like like Europe, was always complaining about the U.S. You should do more about climate. You do right. We're now doing like so much. The Europeans are complaining. You're doing too much. You know now people are, are, are you know Elon Musk is not investing as much in Germany. He's going to invest in the United States. So. China is the biggest car market in the world. It's the biggest population in the world. But like America is the second biggest car market in the world. So, from a from an us and them dynamic, focusing on non-China, you know, focusing on the U.S. I think is 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 a is a good strategy. Europe is more challenged, uh, but there are some companies there, and, and so we're focusing. Regional supply chains are important. So, like Europe, supply chain needs to develop. It'll have to be more refining than mining. Although European metals holdings, in our opinion, is a very underappreciated asset, right in the center of you know Eastern Europe, uh, and, and and should serve you know from a raw material point of view. But you're seeing like Live Ent and Albemarle talking about, I don't know if it's shipping spodumene or shipping other, so Europe's going to be more of a refining story um, with few exceptions. Uh, but in America and in North America, so including Canada, and here we are at PDAC, um, the hottest thing in lithium right now, who would have thought, you know, is Quebec. Right? Like everyone hated Quebec for all these years, Nebraska, Canada, Lithium, RB Energy, all the failures. Oh, it's a basket case. It's a junkyard of... So you have Scion and Piedmont about to generate similar type revenues that Pilbara, you know, is generating. And and if they can get 83%, you know, operate as spodumene software margins, it, it, people are going to realize, wow, we can make tons of money in Quebec, Canada, Spodumene, right? You know, then companies like Patriot and Winsome, who, which have been darling, again, climbing up the RK equity scoreboard, have been these hard rock stories. So when you take, when you factor in geopolitics and localized supply chain into your thinking, focus on the big US market and who could serve that big US market. And there are American projects and there are Canadian projects. The American projects now have, we just interviewed Jigger Shah from the Department of Energy's Loan Programs Office, writing a $700 million check to Ioneer. You know, Lithium Americas is talking about getting up to 75% of their $2.3 billion stage one capex from the Department of Energy's loan program. That would be a $1.7 billion check if they got it. So America is lending money, but those loans are not available for Canadian projects. However, just last week, another, you know, big money Biden strikes again from the Department of Defense point of view and the Defense Production Act, they just made a waiver. They had a, a cap. They could invest up to $50 million in lithium or other types of critical minerals development. Like $50 million is not enough, right, when a company is ready to, uh, you know, get into production. It's okay to do like R&D and some studies. So they just implemented a waiver, which means there's no cap on the 50 billion, or 50 million, right? So this could be a lot more. Um, so, and that is available to Canadian projects because Canada is viewed as a domestic source. There are five countries, I think the UK and Australia, or two in Korea, maybe a, a fourth. They're considered a domestic source. So the Department of Defense might be, you know, a lot of Canadian companies are going to be knocking on the door of the Department of Defense as a result of this waiver. And also within the waiver, it referenced mining in particular, right? So they, they can invest in mining. So this Defense Production Act, all of this momentum was like during COVID, we needed masks, we needed other, that, like the government basically says, this is critical and we could like override and, and so that's a national security kind of consideration. So the, the, the U.S. government, a whole of U.S. government approach is being brought to bear here. The Europeans are whining about it and they're talking about uh, doing something similar, right? And Canada is talking about doing something similar. All of them have kind of critical minerals. They're responding to the U.S. IRA. You know, it's it's Jerry Maguire, show me the money time, in, in my opinion. And... Until I see the money, I'm, I'm tired of seeing European officials flapping their gums, okay, and show me the money. But it's difficult because Europe's 
a collection of many, many estates, right? So I think you need to see like, not just the EU say, okay, like the budgets need, they need to be approved. It's one thing for the EU to say something. It's another for like the, the governments to say, I'm going to fund, I'm suddenly going to like, why is like Spain going to fund, uh, um, you know, money that's going to go into the Czech Republic for European metals holdings, for example, but like it might happen, but like Germany, which has the biggest car industry, they should be writing checks. Germany, which is so desperate for, you know, and reliant on, uh, you know, Russian oil supply, like they should be like, we need to spend tons of money to do this. And then in Canada, like it, Canada's like losing out. Like, you know, Tesla just announced a gigafactory in Mexico. We thought like it could be in Ontario or Quebec. And so what, what, so Minister Champagne, Fitzgibbon and all the other powers that be, uh, Trudeau, you know, where is the money? And as you mentioned, we're here at PDAC. What would you tell investors that are coming from other sectors that are not not the battery metals, like maybe such as gold or silver, who might be looking at, at the lithium sector, what's happening, what you've been talking about, you know, governments getting involved or not getting involved enough, uh, lithium prices going up and down, uh, and so on. Well, would you say, it's, is it still a good time uh, to invest in lithium stocks? And if so, what would be your best piece of advice um, for people that are coming from other sectors and for times such as these? Um, I remember I was interviewed oh, at a Minds and Money conference in 2018 mm -hmm. by Danielle Cambone and you know, all these conferences in New York and elsewhere, but like, like even now, mm -hmm. there are there's still dozens and dozens, hundreds of gold explorers and like the, the Denver Gold Show and the, and the Precious Metals Summit. Are you going to Beaver Creek? Oh yeah, I'm going to Beaver Creek, like whatever, right? Like all this, the, the amount of human endeavor invested in looking for gold, right? Is, is just, it, it's enormous and I've been saying forever for like 10 years i did gold i had success with you know in, in china gold and mexican gold and, and, a, and a few others but but gold is old okay if you look at the last 10 years before it just it's just done nothing all of these people have been like spending all their time that, like like geologists they, they load gold like lithium's not like i hope lithium is not the new gold because gold is 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 Lithium is the new lithium. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all the gold people who laughed at me, why lithium, you know, in 2018, okay, and they were asking me then, is it too late to get into lithium in 2017, 2018? And I'm like, no, it's just beginning. It's still just beginning. Mm -hmm. So you've wasted the last 10 years looking at gold. It's not too late. Mm -hmm. you, you just, just, and, and, and do some good, like, like, If you want the gold price, everyone's just said the reason the gold price is going to go up. The gold price hasn't gone up with, you know, Russia invading Ukraine. Oh, 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 when war, gold is supposed to go up. Inflation, gold is supposed to go up. We have inflation, gold's not going up. Okay? So just like, there are no arguments. Like, yeah, it may go up for a couple of years, but just like, gold is dug up in the ground and then is put back in the ground in a vault that the Federal Reserve or elsewhere. It has no utility. It's, it, gold is a Ponzi scheme, in my opinion. Okay, I've always thought that. So your viewers who are listening to this or reading this are, are, are not going to like me for saying that, but um, lithium is the most interesting because of the supply-demand imbalance, but also it's a young industry, it's a noisy industry, there are all sorts of commentators like us, it's exciting. Like I spoke, I speak to some people who like leave a certain place and they, they, they've been watching lithium and they're like, it's, it's fun. It, it's more fun than nickel. It's more fun than co cobalt. It's more fun than copper, okay? Um, it's definitely more fun than gold. So I also wanted to ask you, we know that you and Rodney Hooper share a lot of insight uh, on the market and the stocks he likes and are watching. Um, what do you think are some key factors uh, when choosing lithium stocks in the current macroeconomic and geopolitical environment, if you, have, if you have to give us some key factors for investors that are listening? I think, again, we start with our scoreboard, mm -hmm. okay? And, um, you know, the, the Pierre Lassonde has this kind of like famous curve where you make money during the early exploration phase, and you make money as companies are going into production. In the period after you found something 
and before you can produce, which can be a two, three, four, five year time period, that middle period is where stocks generally underperform. The news flows let, let, like it, it. So focus your attention on, on those two areas. So that's why like exploration in Quebec and Ontario is interesting, is exciting. It's, you know, but then there are companies like Core Lithium re-rated as it was going into production. Sigma re-rated as it's going into production. I'm astonished that Piedmont Lithium has not re-rated and Sayana have not re-rated knowing they're on the cusp of following Sigma and Core. They may even actually be in production sooner than Sigma, for example. So that's where I would focus my attention. Like Piedmont is a screaming buy, in my opinion. It's one of my biggest investments. We've represented the company forever, just full disclosure. But like, why this trade? But it trades with a different dynamic because it's fully US listed. It's in the Russell 2000. It, it trades, you know, with some EV stocks. So it, it, it has a different dynamic to its trading. Um, so I would focus my attention there. On the other hand, I've said this like for a long time, like we've missed some things like, like Argentina is still like China and Rio Tinto and other people are kind of like buying into Argentina. There's some stocks there that are on the exploration side, you know, a lot of the companies are new and people like, like the new shiny penny. There's a number of companies like Lithium Power International or, you know, Galan, you know, or European Metals Holdings, right, that are... They're not new. They're perceived somewhat tired, right? The news flow is just like, there have been some false starts or whatever, but like the stocks have become less liquid, but they're good quality projects. And we've seen that like illiquid stocks, you can make like a real lot of money. Like when all of a sudden something changes, boom, like the stock could double, triple like overnight. So I think those three names, like Lithium Power, Galan, and European Metals Holdings, um, I own uh, a little bit of each, uh, not a lot, but I, I'm watching them as all of those companies are in that middle period where generally they underperform. But I think they're high probability projects that could be bought or will have positive, I think in Europe, you're gonna like, Cinevec of European Metals Holdings was labeled a strategic by the European Union, right? Like, duh, you know, it's partnered with, it's 51% owner is the Czech state owned utility, like that's going to be developed. And if people don't understand it because it's not spodumene, it's mica, but like, look, if, if people could understand clay Right, which is in situ like 0.3, 0 0.4% instead of 1%. If like lipidolite is happening in China, then tin lithium mine, you know, the mica base, like people, we've, we represent European Metals Holdings and a lot of very smart technical people at strategic companies have looked at it and they're very comfortable with the metallurgy of this project. Um, relative to what they've seen in petalite or lapidolite or sediment hosted. So there's, there's, there shouldn't, but I think it gets some, oh, we don't understand the head grades, like 0.4%, whatever. So, so um, again, I think there's going to be more excitement in the new exploration stories. There's going to be excitement as companies like get into production and if they're not priced for it. Also, by the way, I think like companies like Alchem and Livent, I think I said it earlier in, in this um, conversation, their development projects are kind of like valued at zero. You could argue even like a company like you know, Compass Minerals, which has, uh, um, we introduced to them their technology partner. Uh, DLE is less, less hot, you know, than it was a little while ago, but you know, this is a producing company of salt and potash, um, and they have a lithium project that it's in that kind of middle period. They're not yet going into production. It'll still be a few years, but again, if it's priced at zero, Another company is AMG Advanced Metallurgical. They're in production of spodumene. They're generate. They're going to have four hundred million dollars in cash flow this year, EBITDA this year. They're trading at like two times EBITDA. Like like the, the valuations of producing companies have never been lower, you know, in the lithium space. Despite the fact that like in Almar's case, you know, the price may be approaching all time highs, but it's a great time to um, be looking at the space and, and um, 
you should watch our channel, you should look at our newsletter because we are, you know, we're, we're trying to identify, we're invested in all of our clients, but we are very much trying to find the next kind of like five, 10 baggers. And we have a track record as RK Equity. Like I got my start, the first company, I've been in doing lithium for 14 years. The first company I did was Western Lithium, which is what is now Lithium Americas and the Thacker Pass Assets. So for the first seven years of my career, that was the only company that I promoted. And that was from like a 25 million market cap. You know, now the company is 3 billion. We replicated that in Piedmont. You know, we represented Kidman, which got sold to West Farmers. You know, we, we represent, you know, critical elements, Frontier. Our most recent win is Winsome Resources. Mm -hmm. You know, we invested at the IPO at, at 20 cents. It's, you know, it's up, been up as high as 12 times. So we are looking, we're, we're very selective. We're making concentrated bets, but we're, we're looking for the next Winsomes and the next Piedmonts. Um, and uh, so we'd encourage your viewers to uh, reach out or watch and listen if they want, you know, access to, you know, um, new ideas and, and uh, always interesting commentary. All right. And just to wrap up our conversation today, I wanted to ask you about this uh, lithium webinar that is coming up that you're, that you're hosting, organizing. Would you tell our audience a little bit more and any other thoughts you want to leave our listeners uh, today with about the lithium sector or battery metals overall? Well, thank you for that. So RK Equity and Rockstock Channel are putting on their first ever conference. So it's all virtual be all recorded, although there might be some live stream interaction, and it's called Canada Rocks. It's 100% focused on Quebec and Ontario, it's 80% and 80-90% focused on spodumene developers, but we have brought Nouveau Monde for Graphite to talk a bit about you know that opportunity. So. Um, you know, we have all chem presenting. We have Liven, Sarah Marisol of uh, Liven presenting. Um, we have Sayana, Piedmont, Ken Brinsden of uh, Pilbara, now the chairman of Patriot. He's going to give a keynote fireside chat to talk about why from Western Australia to Quebec, the opportunity he sees there, you know, for replication. Patriot will be speaking. Winsome will be speaking. Critical Elements, Frontier. So it is and a few others, new ones that maybe the market doesn't know so much about that we are, we have pre-selected this group and uh, Cat Accord's Katie LaChapelle is going to be interviewing some of the companies that she covers. David Deckelbaum of Callan is also going to be speaking, Matt Fernley, and then Rodney Hooper and myself will, will also be presenting. So it'll take place on March 21st. Um, we timed it to be a few weeks after PDAC. I'm very impressed that the, 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 this, you're in my first PDAC since 2020. The foot traffic is very significant, um, and the number of booths for lithium companies is bigger than it's ever been. And um, my clients who are here haven't given me much time because the auto OEMs are here. You know, and then the battery, you know, and many other investors. So there's a lot of deal making, and it's not just auto OEMs. Like Pilbara is here. Pilbara is at BMO. Pilbara is going to be an investor and an acquirer. You're going to see consolidate. You're going to see intra lithium consolidation. You're going to see companies outside of lithium getting into lithium, and you're going to see the auto OEMs. So it's a, it's a really exciting time to uh, to be focused on lithium. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Priscilla.